Um, I want to thank the Mayor for putting this on the table and um, the difference is that it generally uh, reflects uh, what the governing body's been thinking with the Mayor, so um, that's, um, that's to be acknowledged. Um, in, in the beginning of this document, the Mayor emphasises the need for um, a level of stability and uh, I think that's quite correct in that in the annual plan year, you are generally, uh, as of past councils, you, you want to really settle things down. You don't make really big abrupt changes in those years. Um, but if you've got something to address, you, you need to address it in that, inter those inter that interim year or interim two years. But um, I, I know that we've booked some $264 million in efficiency savings year on year in that last LTP. That's one hell of, excuse me, that's one heck of a, um, heck of. <laughs> of a, um, a saving in efficiency, and I compliment the Chief Executive and the Chief Financial Officer for achieving that. And it's no mean feat. Um, this organisation has been turned upside down, members, probably three or four times in five years. And I just want to speak about stability that the Mayor refers to. You don't get a productive council unless you actually get some stability. You have to settle this whole organisation down. So we've been attack attacking the cost base and we've been doing it extremely well, but I don't think we've been attacking or sponsoring the productivity of our organisation enough. We've been weighting it all on cost and attacking cost centres. Now we need to step into ensuring, I think we've got some 300 business units within our organisation. We need to make every one of those more productive and start sponsoring that, instill that culture within our organisation. Um, I've, I've heard, you know, councillors say, leading up to this draft budget, um, that, you know, we should shave another 2% off and just go and find it from the organisation. I don't think we understand the ramifications of that when our staff hear that their already stressed business unit is going to be just arbitrarily unspecifically asked by get those in governance to just shave off another lot. That's not very smart of those sitting around a governance table. We should be coming here with specific ideas. If you've got a hint, if we've got a hint of, uh, of waste in an area or, or more efficiency should be, could be gained, then we target that area. I think the days of these general requests, shave another 2%, uh, are very, very dangerous now for this organisation, extremely dangerous. I am not suggesting we don't keep looking into our cost centres. Uh, we need to be rebuilding confidence with our staff and getting a lot more productivity out of our staff. They are very willing, members, to be more productive, but they want to have some confidence that they are going to be employed. Uh, a lot of them are quite worried have been quite worried over these last five years. And we all know instances where employment contracts have been rewritten probably three times for many, many hundreds of our staff. So we're going to rebuild that confidence. I do support the uh, UAGC recommendations here. Um, the retrofit our homes, uh, Deputy Mayor, you are so quite right. The Safe Swim numbers tell us that the, the 12 worst tests on uh, bathing quality are out west and they are almost entirely related to wastewater overflows from private systems. This is a really good way of yeah. going about it. Thank you for that. Uh, the Interim Transport Levy, Councillor Clough, thank you for your um, work in that and you've done a lot of uh, smart work in that area. I want to acknowledge that. Uh, the one area I don't think is worthy of going forward and I've expressed it before members and that is the um, review of rates for large farms. I think this actually contradicts the suggestion that we should have some stability. Um, this is, ex th I know this is going to be um, served back to us with a no by the community, uh, but I won't be supporting that again next week, and I'm saying here now, this is an unnecessary tinkering. Uh, if we were wanting to incentivise, I don't know, development around the core, we might want to relieve residential rate pars, living in compact environments around town centres, this city centre and other centres, and put them on a point six. Um, that's not being suggested. I think this is just, um, uh, it's, it's pandering to a particular sector, um, and I don't think it's worthy of putting out to the public. So I, um, I think going forward, that stability is going to be important. 
Um, you know, I think we need to instill a culture of innovating or, or incubating innovation within this organisation like never before. And we've got some extremely smart people that are bursting with ideas. We need to allow them to come forward with those ideas to make us more productive. Um, and I, I think in going forward also, we probably need a two-tier approach. We need a, a more sort of um, multiple nuanced interventions. And then we need to have major interventions that we deliver at scale. So it's, it's all those little things that our staff can tell us. And then there's the big ones. And that might be the rationalisation of our commercial property assets, like the tower that's now worth 156 million that we bought for 102 or three, and I know there's been some capex expenditure along the way, and a lot of other office space that we're renting all over Auckland. I think that's the low-hanging fruit that we'll look at in the new year. Um, personally, I think tinkering with the UAGC, though, we've got to get away from this. I hear it come up year after year. Um, this is not very smart hanging your hat on that one every year, folks. Um, and I, I, th I think you've got to, we've, we've all got to apply a lot more intelligence to how we approach these budgets and be more specific in our target uh, rather than just hang our hat on these big instruments of um, UAGC. There's a lot of others. The EY camera reports, well, I've said it before, but I, I, th I was quite disappointed with those reports. Um, for me, one of them addressed alternative financing over 10 pages of 130, one almost not. Um, both, I think, fun, uh, focused on traditional funding. I think there's still something we'll get out of them, and a lot more that will contribute around this table come February, March. Uh, but going forward, I think um, there is a, an organisation here that is bursting at the seams to be more productive, and I hope we focus on that and give it some stability for uh, the next five or six years. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Watson. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'll, I'll be brief because I realise this isn't the time or place to go into specifics, but I, I just wanted to uh, uh, commend the attempt in the proposal to sort of uh, set things in a, in a historical perspective and even a, a recent uh, historical perspective because I think that's important. Um, it's, it's very clear out in the community, uh, you know, whether you're for things or against things, that, that there is a, a misunderstanding um, over important issues. And I, I think the organisation really needs to keep making an attempt to communicate the key trends, the key facts, so people do, do understand them, because it's not in anyone's interest for, for, for people to be, uh, you know, uh, feeding off uh, uh, misinformation, uh, and that's both misinformation that that's, uh, you know, serves a, uh, a PR spin or a negative spin. It doesn't matter which way it goes. People need to be informed. And, and in that respect, I think the little section on five and six uh, with respect of the, uh, the LTP reset um, is, is, is useful because it does establish that historical perspective of the super city. I mean, it's, it's five years, but uh, people are... Of, you know, in most cases, always jump to the present, and, and they don't look at what's led, led up to it. And, and in this case, we have the notion of the commitments of the legacy councils. That that was an important starting point. Um, you know, there, there were some council who were, you know, busily uh, um, getting rid of assets to, to to present their books as well as possible. Where there are other councils, uh, for their own uh, reasons, good often good too, who were who were building up in anticipation of the amalgamation. So that was a starting uh, point. Um, we know, all know that the transport um, investment is often the, the hottest uh, property in town when it comes to discussions with our communities at times like this. And again, there's a history that, that goes to where we are uh, with that. Um, uh, in particular, I think uh, the appearance of conversations with central government is, is very important to be signalled because what, what has tended to, to happen uh, and which is perhaps not quite so prevalent now as people are getting an understanding of the huge challenges facing the council, that the government uh, needs to be far more involved than has been the case uh, thus far. And I, and I note that 
comment there, ongoing discussions with government about the funding of the infrastructure needs of New Zealand's only international city, and one that's growing at a phenomenal pace. So I, I'm sure that there are a lot of people out in the community uh, who would like to see that aspect uh, uh, <coughs> proceed far beyond, uh, you know, conversations and discussions into things that are that are far more meaningful. And I think it's important that the council signal very clearly that yes, we have a, we of course have the uh, the major part to play here, but there is another organisation down in Wellington that has a really significant part to play uh, too. Uh, if any number of these issues to do with uh, rates, transport funding. Uh, community fit facilities, etc., to cope with the huge numbers of people pouring into Auckland, uh, satisfactorily addressed. Okay. The only, uh, the only final point I, I, I would make, and, and that is the necessity in these consultations, in these sorts of proposals, is is to be um, open and, and transparent with people, because you have to, and more so now than ever, to bring people along with you, because that hasn't happened. It hasn't, didn't happen with the, uh, the targeted uh, transport rate. It hasn't happened with some other really key issues. Uh, and, and I would suggest that the whole business of the council costs, Councillor Darby has signalled uh, you know, the danger of perhaps trimming too much more or suggesting that, that costs um, or cutting can still occur. I would suggest that the final stage, in line with the EY and the Cameron report, that the council could do to, to regain that, uh, that, that, that following or that trust uh, integrity with the community, is, is to sort of open up its books a bit more to, to a similar examination of the cost, so everyone is seeing what the real alternatives are here. Uh, and, and that goes to the historical development, to where we are now, and to the challenges and the re realistic possibilities that confront people now. So I, I would urge, and it, it may not be at, at this annual plan, but in the very near future, that the council make very clear to the Auckland public what its cost, various cost structures are, and what the ability to actually make economies are. But other than that, uh, I, I think this is a document that that goes some way to, to actually presenting things in a, in a, in a more uh, realistic and, um, and uh, understandable form for the people of Auckland. Which is Thank good. you. Um, Councillor Cooper, actually, Councillor Cooper and Councillor Wood, be very careful every word you say goes over. That's fine. <laughs> what I had to say. No, oh, I realised that, that, but I just you weren't recording. Not that last. I mean, I was hearing, you know, fine. we build stuff no, with yeah. debt. No, it's we don't. That, yes, we do. The councillor, councillor would have forgotten that it was um, <laughs> me that put forward the um, anyway, it's motion it's about it's actually looking at the UAGC, and it was me that actually put forward the resolution around okay. um, the asset review. Um, <laughs> I might not I yell about sorry. this, though. I said sorry. It's your turn. Yeah, yeah. And that if I hadn't. Of I hadn't put that motion forward, you wouldn't even be having the discussion. So, um, yeah, that's good. Some people have just got to, you know, quietly behind the scenes getting the work done. Is there a speaking um, order? Yes, it's all right. Yes, and the order. next speaker is that Councillor my, Cooper. Then yeah, you. Yeah. Oh, she's it speaking is. away already, and you haven't even No, because asked. actually, <laughs> Councillor Clough, I know you have Clive. problems with your hearing, but Councillor Webster did actually did actually say I was next. Councillor. She's... Councillors, I just wanted to point out it's that everything Christmas. you say goes through. It's fine. Ooh, and I just the thought that, built as I assets, called you, friendships. <laughs> sometimes it's just Councillor love Cooper, each other. Sure Thank speak. you, Madam Chair. I did hear you say that to me before. Good. That's why I was speaking. Um, <laughs> so I guess, um, yeah, speaking to the um, asset review, and I think, um, sadly, it, it isn't given a nod in this, um, whether we're going out to consultation or not. Um, and the Mayor didn't support that. He actually said to me, I'm not doing it, and if you want it, you have to put the resolution forward. So that's what happened. And the majority of councillors around the table supported having the yourself. mature conversation. The majority. majority and you. I'm not including you, Councillor Thank Casey. Thank you, So um, the majority um, did support it. That's why we did spend you know, spend a lot of money because it is an important piece of work and I would hope that in the um, annual plan there is a, a reference to that, that that will be something that is happening over this next year or two or three because we know that if we don't look at um, better use of the assets that we have, the only other two levers we've got is 
putting rates up or borrowing more. And we know that the ratepayers can't sustain that because even when we borrow, that goes on the rates. We pay the interest. So we've got to have a good mix. And I think that the conversation is, as um, Councillor Watson said, it's something we've got to have. We've got to show people what's important. And if um, realising assets buys more other useful assets, Selling. which deliver a community good, Selling. when things Selling things that don't have a community good and replacing with, with things that do have a community good is often a more sensible use of that investment. So I think that um, you know we have to seriously look at that and if, if that could be um, added in some paragraph in that um, annual plan yep. just so that we're communicating with our community and they understand the reasons why. Um, in the UAGC, we do have to have that conversation too. Tarang has over 40% UAGC. I mean, mm, and it actually the works the really well. No, well, <laughs> What's, yeah, what including the wastewater component. <coughs> How so, about their port? What about their port? Yeah. So I think those are the sort of things <laughs> we, we need to have those discussions. <laughs> it's Tarang, eh? Don't bring the port up. It's Tarang. This is a workshop now. Are this is a workshop. This is fun. Are we finished? Are you talking about their port? No, well, I'm... Linda, <laughs> you better give, better give trying, Stuart a ring I'm and tell him, hey, mate, you're right over the odds. You could be deputy mayor. Still, we do ha have a CEO that's had experience in, in delivering that and very successfully. So I'll, I'll finish there, um, Thank you. Madam Chair. Could Thank you give it over 40%? Mate? Thank you. Councillor oh, Clark. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right. I actually just want to I want to thank the Mayor and, and I'm not thanking him for the 3.2% uh, rate suggestion because I think we can um, lock in 2.5, there's no question. And I'm not thanking for the status quo on the uh, the way we structure the, T, uh, the t transport targeted rate, but I do commend the Mayor for stressing the stability issue and I particularly commend him for the willingness to go out and consult on alternative scenarios, which he voted on at our October 28th meeting. An alternative has been put up to the mayoral proposal, and I'm not going to discuss that much at all, because we've already flushed out uh, Councillor Wood and Councillor Brewer that they support the 3.2, um, and the average residential rate will be 3.5. So they've already said just publicly before, and I hope it's reported in the Herald tomorrow, that they're not keen to look at a 1.59 residential rate increase, but oh, are indeed endorsing on. the 3.5 per cent. So it'll be interesting on the North Shore to see what they think about that. <laughs> High UAGC might mitigate it. <clears throat> so, and in concluding, I just want to also congratulate the 16 people at the October 28 meeting of finance who agreed to go out and consult. I don't think it's really good that there were five others who didn't want to consult on anything. They just wanted a mural proposal, status quo, and go out, and that's it. We're not going to consult. So I will say congratulations. Okay. We'll notice on the 21 local boards, 14 have come out to say we want to instigate the alternate transport targeted rate. Three have said we're interested in hearing the public feedback. So that's 17 out of 21 boards probably recommending to instigate a change to the transport targeted rate as per the alternate put up by Councillor Casey and myself. So just going out, just to remember, one scenario is more regressive and one is less regressive. One scenario is fairer for business, small business. The majority of business will benefit from a restructured transport targeted rate and it's clearly much fairer for the residents who've been had it socked to them at the last LTP and annual plan rate setting. Thank you. Oh, good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Council 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 Council. Oh, good Madam Chair. Just to acknowledge uh, His Worship and uh, the proposal that he's put. Um, I, unfortunately, I find myself in a compromised situation by uh, the recommendation mm. uh, where uh, obviously would like to support receiving the thing, uh, but would couldn't find myself uh, to go against the law uh, and remove <laughs> ourselves from the process of assisting to... Yeah. Uh,